All right, all right, family. Happy to be back. Let me say grace be unto you from our Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, and peace. Special shalom to all of you who have the testimony. Those of you who do not but are with us again, we offer unto you all welcome, meaning that you come and convene with us to the purpose of learning the truth of the gospel. All right, now tonight, now we have had um, a three part lesson, many have seen it, where we went through line for line many aspects of the law the torah the book of Mo the law of moses all right and we did this examination that we might find out how absurd it is for these brothers who are supposedly the learned of israel um who not only misrepresent their uh positions position as it relates to keeping the law, but also they burden Israel in numerous ways and applications with matters of the law that they do not at, in any wise keep. And with that uh, examination that we went through, uh, all these quote unquote, I keep the law niggas have no doubt been exposed for the frauds that they are and repent all of you uh for your erroring in this lest ye hold on to that pride of yours and it be your downfall you understand that there is no lukewarm that will be accepted by the heavenly father amashag said he will spew you out of his mouth okay so the name of this 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 dialogue we're going to have is kind of like a summary summarizing of the distance that we have traveled together in this short time uh, examining matters of the law in the Torah uh, and matching that up with the claims that these uh, brothers of ours or kinsmen of ours, I should say, um, come with all right so the name of it is cursed is he that continueth not in all things written in the law again cursed is he that continueth not in all things written in the law and of course that comes from galatians in the third chapter the 10th verse but we're going to have a little discussion about it and again this is uh in in the interests of our adequately glorifying the heavenly father now we're going to get into it okay because this is exactly wherein our glorifying of the heavenly father becomes manifest before all the saints for we know what to glorify the father for we're talking about gentile israel never seen our land didn't even know our identity that we were the people. Never knew nothing about the truth of the law. Thus, we have never come within an inkling of a notion of having kept the law. Even though the scripture tells us, I think it's in Second Romans, those of us who had without the law did the things contained within the law are law unto ourselves. But not all of the law have we kept, for no man sinneth not. OK, and with us knowing that there's no reason to be high minded, all glory goes to the heavenly father. For we understand how great this freely given gift of grace is. And how even in ignorance we stand yet guilty, but are not consumed. You see that? But are not consumed even though we stand guilty, even in ignorance. With Leviticus fifth chapter, we learn this. We're still guilty when we find out where we were off. The law wasn't written to say, oh, if you all go into captivity, you don't have to, you don't have to keep my law. I don't know that scripture. Somebody help me. 
All right. So now again, we 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 have been given freely the gift of grace, and how even in our ignorance, being yet guilty, we are not consumed. This is the testimony. Speak of the words of the gospel. That's the good news. See, but if you ask your brothers and sisters around you, what's the good news? What is the gospel? I wonder it would be a lovely study uh, for us to find out what percentage of our brothers and sisters actually have the testimony. I fear the numbers are slight. That's all up to the Heavenly Father. We are simply thanking him for this small group that we are that we have here uh, for having been given the testimony and being able to understand what it is that justifies us, how fortunate we are to be within the grace of the Heavenly Father, how it was freely given, and therein lies our glorifying of him. Because if you don't have the testimony, what are you around here thanking him for? Because you have been beguiled to believe that since you have come into the knowledge of the truth, that you are some type of law keeper. That is not the testimony, and I can't say it enough, but we're going to get down to it. Okay. First, let me go ahead before I finish that dialogue, and let's just read Galatians in the third chapter um, right quick. Galatians in the third chapter really quickly. Get us up to speed on where we need to be right now. Galatians 3 right quick, all right? Galatians 3 chapter 10th verse, and it will read, For as many as are of the law, works of the law, for as many as of the, are of the works of the law are under the curse. Why? For it is written, cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are, were, or excuse me, are written in the book of the law to do them. Not just know about them, but to actually do them. Let's read it one more time. It says, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Okay, so with that being said, we can get back to our dialogue that sets the stage for our understanding. No man has done all the law. But cursed is he that continueth not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. Because it told you to do them all. Didn't tell you to do the best that you can. Didn't tell you to do what feels good to you. Didn't tell you that if you lose your identity and are no longer are in the land of Israel, that all things are washed away and everything's cool. Don't worry about my law. That's not in the book of the law. All right. So now then. OK, so now, of course, we did the three part lesson to examine the law and find out that it is utterly ridiculous and disrespectful to be running around here not only talking about you some law keeper, you hear that? Zuriah, you hear that? All you brothers out here who insist, even though I tried to come unto you and tell you over these last 10 months, I didn't even know what was going on yet, but I knew that we were not of the right mindset. We were working, we were trying, we were coming, we were pro progressing. But when these matters came upon them, when they were brought upon them, they did not receive them well. And that's why you see us not teaching together right here today. Because what communion is there between light and darkness? And I'm not in any wise saying a brother like Zuria or a brother like Amara Yahoo or many of the other brothers who have been with us in times past 
are unrighteous brothers who would break the law intentionally. But ignorance is not an excuse, as we learned a couple of lessons back. That's why we had to do the examination. But they would not accept that this is all about the Heavenly Father's grace, nothing to do with them. So they can save their attempts at Sabbaths and all of this, whatever. And they don't even know what day that is. It's all ridiculous. We've been over it. OK, but they would not receive and obey the truth. That's why we have noted those men and we are keeping no company with them as commanded by the brothers of the ministry. OK, so don't, don't nobody has to feel bad just because things haven't happened yet uh, to this point. We can associate yet to it because we keep hope within this thing that the Heavenly Father might give his spirit unto these brothers and bring them unto the ability to obey the truth of the gospel under Hamashayak. That is the grace of the Heavenly Father. All right. So now um, we did that three part lesson. That's all good in the law of the Moses. Okay. And we, we understand how, in, how insane and disrespectful it is for these brothers to deny the truth. We understand that. Okay. And to burden Israel uh, with law they themselves in no wise keep. We understand that. It says all is to be observed to do. That ye should live. So if you want to go by the law and you want to be under the law. Then you have to do all the law, which no man ever has. No man sinneth not. Again, the scripture hath told us if you want to live yet under the grace of the heavenly father, we yet live and have a chance to be to attain to eternal eternal life because of his grace, because of his freely given grace, because of his mercy. How can you properly glorify the father if you're still saying things like i there is no i in grace he you understand that so now um all i can say is uh you know because we've been given a pathway into the kingdom of yahweh all i can say is wow it was free. I did nothing. You did nothing. He, she did nothing to quote unquote deserve anything free. All right. Now, um, like I said, all I can do is say, wow, hallelujah. Praise you, Yahweh. Praise you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Is this not the good news? Do you even know that that's what the good news is? That your ass has not been consumed, even though you are guilty, even though it said observe to do all of the law, which you haven't done. So how are we not consumed? It is all because of the heavenly father. How in the hell can you be standing up here not glorifying recognizing the father for his grace and think that you got something coming especially when he has sent unto you his servants like a radawa or whoever in the hell else to read you the words of these scriptures just as they are written we don't need no doctrines that's why we have none all right I know we went over these things not a week ago, okay? How it is this day that our salvation has come. This day, not tomorrow. We're going to get into that. I got another special message for you where we talk about the difference between our spiritual salvation and our carnal salvation. No, carnally, we have not yet been delivered we still are physically in the hands of all those that hate us we understand that but spiritually we already have received salvation where were you so many years ago before you came into the knowledge of the truth you were on your way to death 
that's where you were. So how are you thanking the father every the fact that he has not appointed you to death eternal? If not, what do you think he's sitting there looking at you like? Hmm. Now, the ignorant, though they be yet guilty of the law when it comes to spiritual salvation and the grace of the heavenly father, there would be no way unless you have heard it correctly that you could come to a point of understanding. So that's why we have been granted the ability to understand those things that we might speak these things of the gospel unto our brothers and sisters. Okay. Like I said, this day has our, has our salvation come. That was a beautiful lesson. Many have attended to it and all of us are the better for it. Understanding that this day salvation has come. We're not waiting on spiritual salvation. If it is, we have already been granted through the spirit to under the ability to understand that we have already been saved spiritually. All together now. Because we be not consumed. Though not having kept all of the law. That is beautiful. Because it said keep it all. In order to live. Yet we live and are not consumed. Though we did not keep all of the law. That is the testimony of the heavenly father. His freely given grace. This is now how you can go to your brothers and sisters and bring unto them the good news. There is no new good news in the letter that killeth, as saith the scripture. How's that good news? You know, if you've ever gotten out here and actually done the work and before you understood or were given the ability through the spirit to understand spiritual salvation, having already taken place and in the midst of taking place and you attempted to go to your brothers and sisters and do as you were told, bid them to the marriage and started talking about matters of the law. Look at the countenance fall immediately when we start talking about, oh, you got to keep the Sabbath and you got to do, you got to get your fringes and keep your beard on your face and so on and so forth. Many will run away immediately. That's why it said uh, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit that we lay upon you no greater burdens than these necessary things. Necessary things. Okay? So now we should be um, coming about a totality or an entirety to our understanding of the gospel. Okay? Like I said, even as ignorant Gentile Israel, we were yet guilty. That's what we learned. Leviticus 5th chapter broke that down to us. Now we're over here with the understanding in the ministry. Galatians 3rd chapter, 10th verse. We understand why. Because we were supposed to continue in all things that are written in the law. To do them. Not just talk about them and think about them, actually perform them. And we have not done that. No man has. Yet we are not consumed. All right. Now, um, like I said, Gentile Israel, we lost everything identity, knowledge of the Heavenly Father, knowledge of the law. We have no home nor heritage. But with the love of the heavenly father, for, for wherefore he hath loved us, gave unto us according to his promise, Hamashayak, who died for all our sins. He didn't die for the righteous. So when you claim to be already the righteous, it is as if you have made in vain his death. Because he didn't die for the righteous. He died for sinners. According to the prophecies. 
that have been given unto all of the prophets throughout this thousands of years. What did he say? Many prophets desire to see these things and have not seen them to hear these things and have not heard them. But us, we have again all together now. Hallelujah, Ba. Praise you, Heavenly Father. Praise you, Father. Not praise ourselves. Not praise some nigga in some camp. Okay? According to his promise, he gave us a masha. He died for our sins. He hath redeemed us through the Spirit. And restored us to glory through the spirit, not physically. Carnally had has not happened yet. The heathen are still breathing. We're still in the hands of these heathen throughout the face of the earth. We still gotta hold on and endure to the end. It's not the end till it's the end. But if we don't understand these things, we cannot thank him adequately. How could we? Because that means we don't even know why we're thanking him. You just saying shit in your mouth. Thank you, Father. Th thank him for what? If you don't have the testimony, then what are you thanking him for? For being in captivity? For giving your ass a hard way to go. For having another nigga shot down in the street. For having another baby raped by some maniac. And I can go on and on. Father's not silly. He's not asking you to thank him for his terrors. For his goodness, loving kindness, mercies. That's what you are thanking him for. You think a heathen uh, gives a shit to thank the Heavenly Father? Yeah, I know they're under the guile of uh, Christianity and all of that. So they think they're thanking him. But what the hell does it matter when he's when he if they would only know that he said they are less than nothing. This is the power of the testimony. And that very thing that separates us from all almost all Israel. Who have ever lived again. They desire to see these things and have not seen them. Hear these things and have not heard them. Now we, we indeed. Um, we needed to convene to the purpose of examining the law. That we might learn and understand just how absurd these brothers claim in the law are. And to know how truly blessed we indeed do stand. Now we can do that, that we have the testimony through the spirit. Now I said cursed is everyone, not some of some. Everyone is cursed that have not continued in the law to do all of the things written in the book of the law. So how was how is anybody standing not consumed? Only the grace of the heavenly father mercy. Mercy. Now, this this places upon this final captivity of ours a whole different spin. This is why I can now, after everything we've been through together, bring forth this message unto the congregation. We've experienced it. We've seen what we've been through, we've gone through this. We've seen the terror of the Heavenly Father, and we've seen that we have not kept the law. Yet we are not consumed. Yet we have a chance that every man fight for his own salvation with fear and trembling. And why does there need to be fear and trembling if it's all good? Because you can fall off at any time. If you do not attend to the testimony, if you have not received the testimony and knoweth not what this is all about, thus you cannot glorify the heavenly father. 
There's no way. Okay, now think about some things. We who were blind have now received sight. Who were in prison have now been freed. Who were brokenhearted have now been comforted. Who were poor have now been provided for. This is exactly what Hamashiach was sent for. Isaiah 61 and 1 or Luke 4 and 18. Let's read. Uh, let's go to Luke right quick and read that. This is what Hamashiach was sent for. 4 and 18 of Luke. And it will read just like this. It says, Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Blood red letters. Okay. Again, this day, this day, today has salvation come. Don't ever lose sight of it. Okay. All glory to the Heavenly Father. All right. Hoping that all of us may be increased in faith and strength and that we may endure to the very end. We know what our reward is. We don't give a damn about who out here running their mouth, not obeying the truth, denying the truth and setting us at naught. We're not worried about it. We know what we believe, like how my shark said. And with that being said, family, I just wanted to bring this message of exhortation that you attend to the testimony that you have received and depart not from it. And to implore you continually to stay in the faith, stay prayed up and stay on message and stay Loving your brothers and sisters like you love yourself. That means getting off your ass. That means sharing the word with them. That means helping, helping, and more helping. That means taking your time, being patient with them, remembering that you were once purged from your old sins as well. Second Peter, first chapter. You got to go add all of these things. Virtue to knowledge, knowledge, all of these things. Temperance. Okay, that we forget not again that we were uh, purged from our old sins. So now with that being said, let me say grace be unto you from our Elohim, the Holy One of Israel and peace. To all those that have the testimony and, and then this message really resonates with you. And if you don't have the testimony, perhaps this might be a breakthrough for you after it all that we've been going over just to hear uh, a, a brief dialogue like this in all truth and verity then you come out the other end of this a new man understanding that you have already been saved shalom family